What anticipation is for me is um, to be able to place yourself in an unknown land of the future and uh, to be able to also see the different ways that you're looking at that land. The way in which uh, I understand anticipation is uh, the uh, transformation of what we are able to see about the future into action. Uh, just to give you a, a, a simple exemplification, watching a, a weather forecast is not anticipation in my understanding, but watching a weather forecast and as a consequence, uh, taking your umbrella before going to job to your work is an anticipatory behavior. So an anticipation in this sense has to do with actions and on a more general scale, strategy and decisions and what you do in order to uh, achieve uh, results or whatever you are looking for. That from this approach, we are not seeing or looking for a target in the future. We are looking to open up the present and to see the present in a different way. Futures literacy, which is to me um, the command of the discipline of anticipation, your futures literate when you understand the discipline of anticipation, um, is just that. It's just this ability to understand this tool that we use, which is our imagination of what the future might be, and to be more explicit about the different ways of using it and the different techniques. But generally speaking, anticipation is a forward-looking activity. It's taken, it, it has many names. Anticipation is one of the newer ones. Uh, foresight, future studies, and all of those do have nuances and differences. If you take this kind of um, anticipatory systems, kind of theoretical uh, point of view, uh, it leads to very different understanding of what is, uh, what is impact how we actually create the future, what is the future also, and uh, how we are systems that also create these models of the future and, and act based on the models. And so we don't react on what is there, but we react on what is our prediction of what is going to be there. The roots of, of these understandings, uh, the understanding uh, lie in the work of, the, uh, of Robert Rosen, who was a mathematical biologist trying to understand what is life. Uh, that was his starting, a starting point. And in order to try to uh, provide an answer to these uh, basic questions, he developed the idea of anticipatory system. And the real, uh, I would say, that the, 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 the most relevant uh, uh, result of his job has been understanding that most of reality is anticipatory in one way or another. All living systems are anticipatory systems. And uh, it means, uh, for instance, that, uh, I mean, if, if you take it to the kind of human level, I mean, human individuals, all our action is based on predictions uh, of their consequences. We see the world as a meaningful world. We don't see it as a kind of, uh, kind of um, ob objective atoms, but we see the world as possibilities uh, for action. So we see objects and things where we think that we can do something. And this, uh, this is the meaningful uh, world that we operate in. But the meaning itself is all the time based on our anticipation of what would be the consequences of my action. So this also has a kind of view on knowledge which is very kind of action-oriented. So the world is not out there to be discovered, but it's actually constructed uh, by, our, by ourselves. The universe uh, is created out of words. So whatever you say is important. In foresight, I learned that there are stories, that there are many, many stories, that in fact, what people say is the future, is just their story of the future. So in a way, you know, the storytelling, the words, uh, then can become, you know, important tools for imagining, for creating the future. Now, the difference, I guess, here is you consciously taking away, peeling away some of the 
underlying assumptions that, 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 that go towards you know, any image of the future or the present in a way. Now, what happens when you take those out? What happens if I don't, you know, if I'm not standing on this leg? What, what else can I stand on? There is the possibility of taking this innovative and creative aspect seriously. And that leads to a foresight where you actually explore things you try to... Uh, you can only make sense of these things after they exist. So you first have to create future and then try to think what it means and uh, what would be the facts that actually can be associated with this. So the method would be much more kind of agile, dynamic, uh, uh, experimentation-oriented, bringing new kind of uh, uh, meaning horizons together and, and uh, kind of playing with the future. So it's kind of a much more innovative, creative thing. It's not an epistemic uh, stance. It's not a question about knowing the future. It's actually about creating the future. There's many diverse ways of using the future. And I think it's, I think it's quite an important breakthrough to get people to begin to say, oh yes, I am using the future. Because that immediately generates an, an, a, a, an item, something, if I'm using it, what is it? So, so once you're using something, it, it, it provides you with an incentive to think about your mastery of the tool. Um, so instrumentalizing the future in a more explicit way is a, is a tactic uh, that is intended to uh, push people to think, to become more conscious of the fact that they can use the future in different ways. And once you begin to pose the question of can I use the future in different ways, you have both the ontological, what is the future that I'm looking at, is it closed, is it open, and you have how do I think about the future, is it uh, some sort of uh, deterministic uh, econometric model. How am I fabricating my imagination? La prospective, ça peut être un outil de débat. Ça peut être un outil d'aide à la décision. Ça peut être euh, un outil d'orientation euh, stratégique. Et surtout, ça peut être un outil de conduite de changement, hein, parce que les gens, ils sont, ils ont beaucoup d'inertie, donc ils acceptent pas le changement. Ça, c'est les dépologies. Il y a différentes perspectives qu'on observe aussi. Ça, c'est très important dans le monde parce qu'elle est très utilisée par la politique et le politique. Donc il y a la perspective autocratique. C'est-à-dire, je construis pour toi des futurs et tu es obligé de suivre. Donc est, on est dans l'autocratie totale. Ça marche pendant 4-5 ans, mais après elle peut disparaître. Il y a la perspective idéologique qui draine une certaine idéologie. Donc on peut formater les gens et les ramener vers un futur catastrophique. Il y a pour moi qui est très important, c'est le mix entre prospective exploratoire et normative. One thing that I see at work behind the process here at the at the UNESCO Youth Forum is a is an impulse to democratize these tools. So um, instead of confining it to uh, you know to today's decision makers and the boardrooms and the the, the summits of the world, to try to um, to bring these uh, these ways of, of being more systematic and creative about possible futures to other kinds of constituencies. Now, this is a, this is a formal process, for sure, but it, uh, I think it's, it's a positive sign that, uh, that you know, it can be democratised to, to all sorts of people of all ages from all countries of the world. We've just seen 500 people engage in a futures process in, in almost all cases, I would guess, for the first time. And uh, you know, this is this is the stage that the um, that the development of this discourse is at right now. It's it's I think at a at a threshold for democratization, for making it normal to think um, to think systematically and creatively about possible futures as a part of how we um, how we exercise our citizenship. There is no magic. There is no shamanism. It's all in front of everybody's eyes. There is no black box that gives answers. Uh, there's just the power of a human congregation, of a, of a group of people that can, that can address some, some problems or that can address some, some of their challenges and learn more about themselves. For me, I think what foresight does is empowers, and I, I want to use that word in the, in the most positive way. It gives us the capacity to think that we, what we think matters. What we do matters 
in our world. And so if we become better at appreciating complexity, seeing uncertainty as a resource, not an enemy, because of course it's an enemy of planning, we can shift the origins of our fear and construct our hope in a different way. And if we can do that, I think it allows our identity to be more whole with respect to our origins, so the past, but also our aspirations. And that presumably will make people happier <laughs> and uh, more at ease with who they are in a universe that has this amazing potential to change. Change is what is uh, important in this work. Uh, so it's a little bit disruptive, it's a little bit subversive, uh, and, uh, and just being able to help people understand that uh, anything which perpetuates the current dominant systems or status quo um, is, is basically a colonization of our futures and uh, just reframing the way we think about how we ourselves perpetuate it in our languages, in our metaphors, in our practices. Also, our practices are very much embedded in certain cultures and models. It's uh, a very inclusive way to create knowledge because there is uh, no one uh, Mm, with better knowledge than the other. And this is very important to build confidence and uh, to feel free to create. Si je comprends pas culturellement parlant, comment l'autre il perçoit le futur? Comment tu perçois le futur? Comment euh, mon voisin perçoit le futur? Donc c'est perdu d'avance. Donc moi je veux converger mon futur et je ne prends pas en considération ton futur. Et ça, c'est une question sociologique, philosophique, idéologique, culturelle, conceptuelle qu'il faut intégrer. Donc, il ne faut pas qu'on s'attarde seulement sur les outils et les méthodes. Moi, à mon sens, pour réussir la prospective à l'UNESCO, il faut faire le mariage entre le, la pratique, je suis d'accord, c'est très important la pratique et on voit très bien ce qui se passe aujourd'hui. Moi-même, je suis impliqué, donc je suis convaincu de ça mais surtout la recherche conceptuelle pour avancer tout ce qui est épistémologique dans la pensée prospective à travers une approche culturaliste. Forces coming from the past are just half of the picture. There are forces and ideas and hopes and fears coming from the future, so to say. So uh, this anticipation from this point of view is that framework that may help to rewrite the human and social sciences giving equal root, equal strength to both the past and the future. And the present is that situation in which these forces you know, interact uh, and sometimes the past is the force that wins or sometimes the future may take the lead and uh, bring us towards new horizons. The why is uh, to experiment and to try to uh you know, improvise new ways of being so that we might have different futures. So one of the images that I have in my mind is kind of the way that we approach things so far is usually thinking that if we change the structures, we'll change the way people behave and we'll have a well-oiled well machine in our societies. But it's actually the reverse. If we change the way people interact, we change the way people think and behave, which brings new structures naturally into existence. That's, for me, the why, is, uh, is again, uh, somehow changing the assumptions underneath what we think change is. Because final, in the final countdown, anticipation, foresight and futures is about change. We can uh, describe our theories behind, behind what we're doing, but in a sense, um, it remains to be seen what impact it'll actually have. Speaking frankly, you know, that's, we don't know exactly, but that's because we've never had a society that's really attempted to do this.